वेलकम टू प्योर एक्सपीरियंसिस दिस इज द थर्ड पार्ट इन द सीरीज ऑफ रीडिंग ऑफ शिव सूत्र वी हैव ऑलरेडी फिनिश द टू वेज द वे ऑफ द शिव एंड द वे ऑफ द शक्ति वी आर नाउ स्टार्टिंग द थर्ड वे विच इज कॉल्ड आणवो उपाय इट हैज बीन ट्रांसलेटेड एज द फाइन वे बट इन माई ओपिनियन द वर्ड अणु मीन्स एटम स्मॉलेस्ट सो दिस विल बी इंटरप्रिटेड as a small way not the fine way so better translation will be a lesser way very much similar to the mahayan or hinayan schools of buddhism one is the greater way greater vehicle and one is the lesser vehicle this is for those for whom the above two methods have failed the goal is to reach the universal consciousness to destroy the ignorance so here shemraj and lakshman ji are saying that in the first sutra of the first awakening the definition of your own self is given in the first sutra of the second awakening shemraj has again defined the reality of the self and in the first sutra of the third awakening he also explains the reality of the self but there is a difference in these three explanations in the explanation given in the first sutra of the first awakening is for the self situated in his real way of being in shambhopai so that verse which is chaitanya mahatma he says independent god consciousness is the reality of the self in the first sutra of the second awakening he says chittam mantra the mind is mantra in this sutra the author has descended slightly from the real way of being of the first sutra of the first awakening to the experience of the impressions of thought in this sutra he is residing in the world of the mind not in the world of his real nature but here his mind is so purified that it has become the embodiment of all mantras and that embodiment of all mantras is aham supreme i consciousness now in the first sutra of the third awakening he again explains the formation of the self here though the self is defined as being absolutely one with the limited state of thought which is the mind and while explaining the third awakening of the shiv sutras which is concerned with anvopai the means of the individual limited being he will elucidate the formation of individual being so in essence the first awakening or the shambhopai is direct your uh, true nature is shown directly and is revealed directly as this universal consciousness i am that second way or like just like here it is called or as it is called here the second awakening or the shaktopai the seeker will be mostly concerned with energies thinking that these moving energies are me and he will he would like to purify his mind so that he becomes a absolute purified channel for the energies that is shakti that is the matrika that is the mother and in the third one danvopai the practices are mostly concerned with the individual being individual limited being so it will be interesting to see how these practices can lead to the ultimate knowledge indirectly and incidentally the anvopa is the longest one i think it will take one or two more parts for me to finish it i would i will try to go through it quickly because you already have a good idea of shiv sutras what are they about so the number one says atma chittam the self is mind this can come as a shock for those who are just joining this series those who have those who have no introduction to the part 1 uh, and 2 or the first awakening and third awakening because they will think no that is not the thing that is taught to me i am not the mind that is what an advait person is going to say and if you don't know that this is the lesser way then you will think oh this shavism is uh, total rubbish you will close the book but remember this is for people who could not succeed in the above two ways what do they know they only know this thing that i am the body and i am the mind they do not know anything above this and so for them the proper teaching is the self is mind now shemraj has added his own interpretation here obviously he says individual being is the mind entangled in the wheel of repeated birth and death okay i mean what is the consequences of you being the mind you will be entangled in a repeated existence 
repetitive existence there is nothing wrong being a mind if you accept this kind of existence so let us read a little bit here individual being has been transformed into the nature of mind but what kind of mind is this it is not the mind filled with mantra the god consciousness of supreme i it is that mind which is eternally saturated with the impressions of sensual pleasures and this individual is attached to the three intellectual organs mind intellect and ego the function of these three organs is as follows first understanding what is to be done is accomplished by the organ of intellect second the thought of how to do it is accomplished by the organ of the mind third the ego is attached when we say this is to be done by me these three movements are the functions of the mind of that individual being it is this mind of the individual being which is atma here the sanskrit word atma does not mean individual being the word atma comes from the verbal root ata in grammar the meaning of ata is satyata gamane who comes and goes who is always in movement moving in repeated births and deaths being born and dying again and again so he who is always entangled in the wheel of repeated births and deaths is atma and that mind is atma and why does he move in repeated births and deaths this happens when he neglects the knowledge of his own real nature this individual being moves in various wombs by possessing at different times either a sattvic pure state of thought a rajasic active state of thought or a tamasic dull state of thought in the present sutra atma is defined as truly inferior being this is the state of individuality it exists when the supreme being possesses the state of individuality possessing this state and being shrunk from all sides he becomes an individual being you should not think therefore that the author has explained atma in different ways the explanation given for atma in the first sutra of the first awakening is correct in that state of being and the explanation given for atma in the present sutra is correct in the present state of being described above as who comes and goes so it is very good that everything has been clarified here in the beginning that uh, the atma that is mentioned here is not to be confused with the atma that is mentioned in the first two upais and definitely not to be confused with the word atman which is being used in the advait the atman is brahman it is the highest as far as advait is concerned but uh, it may happen sometimes that people who read a lot people who have a lot of bookish knowledge will not take the trouble of differentiating the terminology first oh the atma was told to me as being the mind that uh, takes birth and then is dies and now this advait thing is telling me that atman is brahman it is impossible so here there is no other option for this bookish individual to reject one thought and adopt the other thought whichever he thinks is right there is no discrimination his knowledge is not based on experience and the words they will only confuse you so they could have actually renamed the atma here to something else but uh, it is very deliberate because a person who is following the anvopai knows nothing except being an individual being the doer being the thinker that is how the individual is here the atma is the self the mind is the self here so keeping this in mind that we are dealing with a lesser path let's proceed gyanam bandha knowledge is bondage and for all for this limited individual all knowledge is bondage so he is saying that whatever knowledge he possesses in this state of limited individuality is differentiated knowledge in this state there is no possibility of possessing undifferentiated knowledge so the sutra's meaning is very clear that <laughs> all the whatever the individual thinks is absolute ignorance does not know what is knowledge and depending on the three kinds of intellectual organs intellect mind and ego the by the way because of the uh, limitation of english these may look like same words everywhere but uh, the intellect is a translation of buddhi mind is a translation of manas and the ego is a translation of ahankar there are no proper words in english for these things the knowledge found here functions in three way three ways the three intellectual organs first understand what is to be enjoyed then establish that understanding and finally attach ego to the understanding and these three intellectual acts are one with sukha pleasure dukh pain and moha illusion sukha is con- connected with the sattvic state of life 
Dukh is connected with the Rajasic state of life and Moha is connected with the Tamasic state of life. These three states of life are controlled by this limited knowledge of the individual being. Therefore, this kind of knowledge causes you to possess only differentiated knowledge, not undifferentiated knowledge. When he is entangled by these three kinds of differentiated knowledge, he travels in the world of repeated births and deaths in various ways and that in reality is bondage. So, the three gunas make an appearance here in Shaivism also. It will be difficult to say who took inspiration from whom. So, this is told in Spanda in these one and a half verses. When the five ten matras give rise to the three intellectual organs, intellect, mind and ego, then collectively there are eight organs. These eight organs are said to be Puryastaka and they function in our dreaming state. This Puryastaka prevents you from getting through the reality of yourself. When the reality of your nature is ignored, then you are dependent on enjoyment which cannot be refused. Because of this, you are played and entangled by the wheel of repeated births and deaths. Now you will be told how to end this wheel of repeated births and deaths. So Tanmatra are the qualities which form the mind and the matter and everything. The basic elements are formed out of various proportions of these Tanmatras. Tanmatras means tiny measurements. Kaladinam Tattvanam Viveko Maya Of the beginnings of any single part of the whole is non-distinction of realities which is Maya. And this, this is completely beyond me. This book says, Being unable to possess the undifferentiated knowledge of the 31 elements, you live in those elements, from Kala to Prithvi, which are the expansion of the energy of illusion. So what is Kala? Is the first element found when descending from your own real nature. Being limited by Kala Tattva is to be separated from possessing the energy of unlimited action. Because of Kala Tattva, you possess the energy of limited action, limited creativity and, and so also possessing only some limited knowledge. You are disconnected from the being all-knowing. In this way, you descend into the world of limitation where you finally enter into the state of Prithvi, Earth, the grosses state of Sansar. So there is a lot of uh, detail here about uh, the elements and uh, from the subtlest to the grossest and all. As soon as the descent happens from the real nature, the individual goes through all these uh, gradations of elements and finally takes the grossest form. It is said in Tantra Sadbhava, in the results of your God consciousness, Chaitanya, being fenced in by the five coverings is that you act in a limited way. Know in a limited way, love in a limited way, live in a limited way and possess in a limited way. Being attached to this path with your organs of knowledge and organs of action, you are guided to walk the spiritual path in a limited way. Your attachment to this path is such that even if you meet an elevated soul who desires to show you the correct path, you will not accept his guidance. Consequently, in your world of illusion, where you remain filled with insecurity and fear, these limitations are bondage here, being completely dependent on the elusive energy of knowledge. And being without real knowledge, you are continuously doing right or wrong. So, being completely entangled in that fence, you become just like a beast. In this verse, in the Spanda Shastra, it is also said, for those who are fully aware of God consciousness, all the organs of cognition, organs of action, and organs of the intellect lead them to that supreme state of God consciousness. For those who are not aware, these same organs deprive them completely of the God consciousness. These organs, therefore, perform in two ways, depending on whether you are fully aware or not. Those who are deprived of awareness are pushed down into the field of ignorance. Those who possess the fullness of awareness, however, become completely elevated so the fence of five coverings is the well-known five bodies. The physical body, the etheric body, the astral body and the bliss body and so on. These are successive limitations. And by the time the individual reaches the bottom most, he has lost all knowledge, he has lost all intelligence, has become like an animal, running after pleasures, avoiding pains. And he thinks the body is me and the world is real. And avoids even the mention of spiritual knowledge, is completely disgusted by any evolved beings. 
he will insult the guru he will insult the wise people and becomes almost a lesser being the sign of such a person or individual is that he is engrossed in suffering and is busy causing suffering for others and you must have seen such people <laughs> 99.99% are like this unfortunately this is the time the time is dark so in all this very amazing description i forgot to tell you the my own interpretation of what this number 3 means kala dinam tat naam aviveko maya so using the definition of the word kala from uh, this book by shemraj adi means etc so the elements like kala and all those elements the five elements and 31 elements when the discernment is lacking then these elements are taken as truth and the individual is trapped in maya or you can say in short the maya is taking all these elements forms as true and this is also lack of discernment that is what i could understand from this number 3 which is true sharire sanhar kala naam and it is translated as the destroyer of parts is in a body i don't understand it this book says you must make all the circles kalas in your body enter one into the other from gross to subtle beginning from prithvi and ending in shiva there are five circles in this process of going from gross to gross to subtle you have to make one circle enter another circle you do this by putting the effect in its cause and then you put that cause in its cause and then you also put that cause in its cause and in the end you will find only shiva existing everywhere when shiva is there then you are one with shiva you can't be an observer of shiva there and the observed and the observer become one to explain more clearly from the element earth to shiv tattva there are five circles or enclosures that form the boundaries for all the 36 tattva and these five circles or kalas are nivritti kala pratishta kala vidya kala sant kala and sant tita kala you have to make these five circles enter into each other in your own body which is comprised of three states waking dreaming and deep sleep here you have to think that the grossest circle has entered in its nearest most more subtle circle and that circle has entered in its nearest still more subtle circle and so forth nivritti kala is situated in the grossest element which is the element earth the next circle is pratishtha kala possesses the 24 elements from water to prakriti tat the third circle is called vidya vidya kala possesses six elements these are six fold coverings kala vidya rag kala niyati and maya the elusive energy of god you will find the fourth circle sant kala in the supreme pure being from shuddha vidya tat to shakti tat The fifth circle santita kala is found in the first and subtlest element shiva so to elevate the state of being completely entangled in limitation you have to practice going from gross to subtle as outlined above to do this you must meditate and imagine that the gross state of the nivritti kala has entered into the pratishta kala and so on vigyana bhairav is quoted here you have to meditate that the grossest orbit of the world bhuvan dha has entered into the more subtle orbit of the world tatvadha and then this subtle representation of orbit has entered into its subtlest representation of kaladha gross has entered into subtle and subtle has entered into subtlest and when in the end your mind becomes unminded then you are one with god there is no difference between your being and god so we get more words here so after reading through these techniques of successive dissolution of uh, illusion of the gross the number 4 can can be now reinterpreted as destroy the various bodies that appear as kalas and here you can see that uh, the word kala has been elaborated to mean that uh, they are forms of the mind layers of the mind starting from the gross to the subtle 
recognize that these are just forms of the mind they are not separate realities in themselves for example we think that the gross body is matter it is something separate from the mind but what the technique is trying to do here is asking the practitioner to see the gross body as perceptions only because that is what it is we do not know gross body in any other form except perceptions and perceptions are mental they are mind created the thought that it is matter it is solid it is separate from the mind is just a thought it is just imagination the direct experience tells us that it is not a body that is made up of matter the direct experience tells us that i am perceiving a body which is whose nature is mind only the nature of the perceptions of the body is mental so that is the destruction of the physical body and integration of it into the layer of perceptions which is you can also say is the layer of senses now those who are interested can adopt the shakta terminology here two or three kinds are given here you can adopt these kalas the names of the kalas nivritti kala and all that but it is very much like um, the yoga where the panch koshas five koshas are seen as layers of the mind when i explain it in my writings or talks or meetings i call it unification of experience and i not only include the body i include the world also the world is nothing but a collection of bodies of various kinds living and non living all perceptions only so i add that lowest layer so that in one stroke you get rid of both worlds and bodies and you integrate them into the mind there is some strange language going on here that imagine this and imagine that think this and think that and this is very typical of any indian uh, technique that they will never say understand this see this i think it is just a language issue that languages are like this whenever somebody says think that your body is part of the mind uh, what they are actually employ implying is that i try to understand this see this as your experience look the body is not matter look it is mind and look these the activity of the nervous system the sensations they are not in the body they are also mind same goes to emotions and same for the emotions and obviously thoughts are mind nobody needs to be told that imagine thoughts are mind <laughs> so if you read the technique from the book you will be completely lost if you get it from a guru when the guru is sitting in front of you and demonstrating it probably you will understand what is being meant by destroying the bodies of the various kalas and i can almost guarantee that if you don't know what is happening here you will never understand the sutra and you will never understand the technique so you, you can see the advantages of coming from the advait path are tremendous when it comes to understanding of the shiv tradition those who are interested in listening my suggestion would be don't jump into shivism you won't understand a single word come by advait master the techniques of the advait first now you can see that this is the lesser path and <laughs> it is already beyond understanding of an lesser human <clears throat> how difficult it must be to get the and there are two parts number 5 which is just one word huge word nali sanhar bhut jay bhut kevalya bhut prithakt kani which is translated as the accumulation of channels victory over the elements detachment of the elements and separatedness of elements okay before we go there i just forgot to mention that when you reach the subtlest la- layer of the mind which is awareness you will see that it is nothing but consciousness yes this gross body is the perception yes the perceptions are sensory um experiences yes the emotions are a different kind of sensory experiences thoughts and all they are all mental in nature there is awareness of thought the thought are nothing but awareness of thought there is no existent of existence of thoughts as non awareness you cannot claim that look there are thoughts going there is mental activity mental experiences but nobody is aware of them this is not going to happen and so 
the consciousness of mind is consciousness itself and so the mind is consciousness itself because mind is nothing but consciousness of mind what is consciousness shiva himself and now you are established in the shiva nature it seems like a standard technique to be because it is being used in many traditions and like the book says do not imagine or do not think that i am shiva now i have become shiva do not imagine these things imagination will simply add garbage in your mind you need to see it like this it's probably the style of writing or style of teaching is like that but and uh, um, i hope that in the normal settings of this practice it is made clear so number 5 is translated as the accumulation of channels victory over the elements detachment of the elements and separatedness separateness of elements in the book says the merging of the movements of breathing controlling the gross elements diverting attention from all objective senses and directing it towards the center of the movement of the breath and removing your consciousness from the grip of the elementary field these are another set so set of uh, practices so this uh, explanation is very clear in my opinion this one is not these do sound like uh, the standard um, patanjali yoga practices pranayama and all so this must be done by the follower of the lesser path to train the attention to train the mind otherwise the gross body is not going to merge into the subtle body this kala is not going to merge into the other kalas in shavik terminology in the book says when in explaining anopai you reach the terminus there you will find a touch of shaktopai and when you explain shak- shaktopai in a beautiful way in the end you will find its terminus in shambhopai so this process of meditation which is not outside of anopai is explained in the sutra the other means of meditation which are interconnected with this process of meditation dhyana pranayam dharana pratyahar and samadhi are explained so it is almost same as padanjali yoga how to do that the swachhanda tantra says take your breath out through the right nostril and in through the left nostril this is the purification of all veins and the purification of the path towards final liberation this retention of breath this retention of breath pranayam is done in three ways exhaling inhaling and retaining these three ways of uh, the retention of the breath breaths are gross and commonplace there are however three other ways of retention which are internal and uncommon you have to take your breath out in the center of your navel and don't let your breath actually go out just push it a bit in the center of the navel this is internal exhaling then you should again take it to the center of navel this is internal inhaling so first give it a push and then take it back in the navel in this uncommon practice of breathing exercise pranayam you have to just push and then back push and back without breathing out or in so here the kumbhaka functions in three ways so the footnote says the kumbhaka is the restraining and controlling of breathing the kumbhaka referred to here is not a gross retention of breath but a subtle one only done by advanced yogis so while breathing out it is not going away it is already come back when you breathe in it is not going away and when you retain it it is there so these three processes of pranayam are to be done in the center of navel the word bhutja means to achieve control of the five elements from earth to ether through contemplation so this is explained in the swachhanda tantra in this way whenever you want to control the wind in your body the wind here means the energies of the body you must through contemplation put your awareness on the big toe of your left foot when there is insufficient fire in your body less warmth in your body you should meditate by putting your awareness in the center of the navel when there is lessening of the flesh in your body you have to contemplate contemplate on earth while putting your awareness in the pit of your throat to increase that flesh when there is a lack of water or you are flooded then you must contemplate on water while putting your attention on the inner tongue just near the talu you to attain all the powers that you desire you must contemplate on the element ether akash while putting your attention on your head so 
if you are planning to do these things please consult a experienced guru otherwise they mean nothing the meaning of the word bhute bhya kevalam is to be free from the elements how is this accomplished you must draw back pratyaharam your mind from the objective field of sensory pleasures and concentrate it on the center of the breath so everybody knows this i think moha varnat siddhi fulfillment is from an act of concealing the delusion of mind and the other book says the powers are brought into existence when a yogi's consciousness is covered by the energy of illusion so we have the most popular item here the powers siddhis and uh, that being who arose spontaneously swambhu and appeared in this universe by his own free will swatantra who is not entangled in the wheel of repeated births and deaths who is the supreme state which is beyond various thoughts and who is the eternal treasure is only shiva and none else all actions of limited beings are witnessed by him the one who is directed toward these limited yogic powers is carried away from the consciousness of lord shiva and is not capable of experiencing his nature so there is a warning about his powers because when they are revealed they carry the yogi away from his goal which is shiv some uh, comment about the asanam he is to direct his consciousness between his two breaths of exhaling and inhaling after putting his consciousness in the center between these two breaths he must hold his awareness in that center and there must and there he must establish this power of awareness in continuity not being diverted for even one moment when he is established there this is real posture asana for this yogi so you can achieve this while sitting in any posture because the real posture is the one that is described here so from the chef point of view what is dhyan when this sound subside and he goes beyond the experience of them he attains that supreme state of ecstasy which is uh, ineffable and which <clears throat> only he knows this is actually dhyan so the sounds here are the sounds that uh, people hear when they are in the state of uh, trance is a very common phenomena hearing sounds and uh, seeing lights and the sensation of flying and being detached from the body and what is dharana when he holds the consciousness of lord shiva in continuity eternally without any break this is dharana so it does not matter what is the state of the mind the awareness must be present all the time that will be dharana and what is samadhi for this yogi when such a yogi experiences the state of universal consciousness of lord shiva not only in his eternal internal state of uh, consciousness of self but also in the very active life of the universe this is called, this is called real samadhi so samadhi is um, just a technical word for oneness the yogi sees everything as consciousness there are no two here the experience is merged into the experiencer and this may happen in all the states of the mind waking dreaming sleeping dying so on मोह जयाद अनंत भोगात सहज विद्या जया थ्रू द कॉन्क्वेस्ट ऑफ द डिलूजन ऑफ माइंड थ्रू इनफाइनाइट एंजॉयमेंट इज द कॉन्क्वेस्ट ऑफ द नेचुरल नॉलेज आफ्टर कॉन्करिंग द फील्ड ऑफ इल्यूजन बाई डिस्ट्रॉइंग इट्स मेनी इंप्रेशन वन अटेन्स द विक्ट्री ऑफ द प्योर नॉलेज ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस इट इज वेरी क्लियर जागृत द्वितीय कर वेकिंग इज द डूअर ऑफ फॉर्मिंग द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ एनीथिंग and here it says the waking state is another form of his real nature of consciousness so i agree with this interpretation this is this one is totally wrong the waking state is same as the enlightened state there is no need to get into specific kind of samadhi state in order to be the shiva so the word kara here may mean hand and the dvitiya kar will mean the second hand so the waking state forms second hand this can be alternate translation nartak atma 
the dancer is self that is correct the dancer in this field of universal dance is his self of universal consciousness so that uh, will bring to your mind the image of the natraj he is the dancer by dancer probably the author means that the dance of the creation destruction maintenance an ending continuous creation change is the self it is not different from what you are you are the natraj also rango antratma the stage is the inner self so rang means the yes the stage yes here it is translated as the player as the internal source so probably here it is this is a mistake it is the stage this one i feel is more correct the theater is also the self or you can say that it is the inner self which is the individual soul individual self but yes i can now see that this can be replaced by the player also it will still make the same meaning prekshagani indriyani the spectators are the organs of senses so very poetic here <laughs> but uh, that is true divashat satya siddhi by means of wisdom is fulfillment of true essence by means of the supreme intellect filled with the awareness of the self the yogi experiences that he is actually acting so additional phrases have been added here the essence essence of this sutra is saying that uh, using the intellect the truth is known or truth is achieved siddhi is fulfillment accomplishment so dhi is obviously the intellect and vashat is correctly translated as the means or the command the command of the intellect so even the lesser path involves use of intellect <laughs> you cannot escape the intellect it is not a mechanical robotic path which some may feel and some do practice in this way keep breathing keep keep breathing keep looking at the lights and sounds nothing will happen if you do it without involvement of your intelligence so this book goes into the details of interpreting it as true acting the word sattva and that is fine assigning more meaning i think it's not needed siddha swatantra bhav one who has attained the highest true is free being that is very true <laughs> yatha tatra tatha nitra as there so elsewhere so the words are very clear but why this was said this absolute independence is the same in the external world as well as in samadhi so this is said in the swachandra tantra he is always independent he is independent here he is independent there he is independent everywhere so yes now you come to know that the word anyatra or elsewhere means that no matter what is the status no matter what is the state the yogi is now it, it will be kind of very difficult to call him an individual so we drop the word individual also and simply use the word yogi he has become the shiv so shiv is the same everywhere that is why as they are so elsewhere bija vadhanam attention of origin maintain break breakless awareness on that supreme energy which is the seed of the universe so the origin should be replaced by seed what is the seed of the universe natraj himself give it your unbounded attention give it give him your complete attention all the time that is the same as the awareness practices mindful practices and so on remain at the source beej is source as it says here in the alternate translation so origin is source also not a big problem there asanasthe sukha rude nimajjati practicing asana he is easily immersed in deep water so this uh, translation somehow eliminated the sukham word here which means happiness joy pleasure so now the sutra will read that when the yogi is sitting in the asan he is immersed in the ocean of joy so matra nirmana mapadayati when causes the creation of one's own measure i'll need to look here for that experiencing that this objective world is is the product of his subjective consciousness he can create anything he desires 
So yes, that's that is more clear than this line here. Knowing that everything is being created by me, whatever he desires appears. This is a big claim. So we are not talking about the in, about the individual here. You should keep this in mind. And it is very clear when we say that the universe is creating whatever it desires. It's already happening. The individual is a creation, not the creator. So people may misunderstand this thing as that uh, the body, mind, human who is given the title of the yogi is doing something. No, the Nataraj is doing everything through this body, mind. And probably he is powerful enough. Probably he is now empowered to do the creative work even. more strongly that can be you see a uh, debatable point whether this happens or not because i am still sitting in the inside the boundary of a skeptic advait person so it is very difficult for me to accept any magic here a shiv person will not hesitate to say it directly without trying to twist it <laughs> in certain way he will say the yogi gets the powers of the shiv he does whatever he wants to do as a person and this this can be a um, difficult difficult thing to digest yes miracles will start happening around him the yogi also knows knows that it is not me it is not this person who is doing the miracles so that uh, metaphysical and paranormal angle is still debatable but the shiv sutras are giving it away very clearly Vidya Vinashe Janam Vinash, not in the destruction of knowledge is the destruction of birth. When the knowledge of self is permanently established, then the birth and death are gone forever. So it is it is kind of very tricky because the Vinash word appears twice here. So you you can <clears throat> actually see that it is combined with the Vidya, so it is actually a Vinashe. This is correct now. Non destruction. This can read that uh, the. knowledge of that which which cannot be destroyed becomes a reason for the destruction of birth and death for that uh, causal body he does not get birth in the lower forms now karvag dishu mahesh vardaya pashu matra in the energy of shiva etc in the beginning of the class of literal letters are the mothers of animals completely not obvious so let me find this is the alternate translation in the world of letters words and sentences the eight energies of the lord who are the mothers of bees take control and hold him so here the reference is made to the matrika shakti not only matrika but a specific kind of matrika which is the kavarg which are the first few letters of the sanskrit alphabet Glateral letters, Maheshwari is the Shakti. So here the Shiva Sutras, my Shame Raja is going into a lot of detail into the Matrika and the various sounds and letters. So my understanding would be that it is pointing somehow to the animal nature that is being created by the Matrika Shakti through through these letters. Trishu Chaturth Tel Vada. a sacham the fourth should be poured like oil in the three which is very cryptic and uh, here it says the fourth state turiya must be expended like oil so that pervades the other three waking dreaming and deep sleep so a little bit of metaphor here the fourth should seep like oil seeps into everything magna swachitten pravishit one should enter with one with one's own mind emerged the yogi who is merged in his self must enter completely with his mind filled with great awareness this is much better translation one should enter this state with complete awareness the state of fourth that is how you will remain there prana samachare samadarshanam within the practice of prana is the looking on all with indifferent eyes when his breath begins to slowly move out towards the external state then he also experienced the pervasion of the god consciousness there well i could understand the word samdarshanam which means uh, indifferent uh, seeing everything should merge and everything should look uh, same not different and i would like to translate samachar as uh, equal 
बिहेवियर सम इज इक्वल आचार इज बिहेवियर कंडक्ट नॉट टू बी ट्रांसलेटेड एज द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ प्राण बट द बिहेवियर ऑफ द प्राण प्राण इज द एनर्जी दैट इज एनिमेटिंग एवरीथिंग सो एवरी प्राणी और एवरी ऑर्गेनिज्म लिविंग और डेड अपीयर्स एज सेम बिहेव एज सेम दिस वुड बी माई अंडरस्टैंडिंग बट यू ऑलरेडी हैव टू मोर इंटरप्रिटेशन इफ यू डोंट लाइक दिस वन